And the crowd on the ground looking up, they have a visual on him right now. Say, you're about to jump from a plane 25,000 feet from the ground. That sounds freaking terrifying, right? But the question is, how do you survive that skyfall with no parachute? His name is Luke Akins. He made a history by becoming the first jumping 25,000 feet with no parachute. Take note, without a parachute. It is really terrifying. How did he do that? The clue is conservation of momentum. But first, what do we mean by momentum? What is momentum? Ano po momentum? Oh nga po. <laughs> In physics, momentum refers to the quantity of motion that an object has. It can be defined as mass in motion. All objects have mass. So if an object is moving, then it has momentum. It has its mass in motion. It's like an inertia in motion. To explain this further, I have here a balloon. I bet you've blown on this stuff before. Buy something like a balloon racket and see what will happen. You have this pressure that's pushing air molecules out that way. The balloon's conservation momentum has to go the other way. This is by Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. This is how rockets work. You can't use a propeller in space because there's nothing to push against. So, rockets are like throwing some stuff, chemical combustion, from their back and make them go to the opposite direction out there in space. So, you're moving fast. You have this momentum. How do you stop it? Well, the moment you try to stop something from moving, that shows change in momentum. Or in other words, impulse. I have here an egg. Throw this against the wall and it broke. I have here another egg. Throw this against a cloth and it didn't break. Same speed, but what is the only difference between the two? Time. The time was very short against the wall, therefore the force was big. While in the other one, the time was big, therefore the force was small. Same with parkers, they jump off crazy things. But what do they usually do? They either roll, slide, or flip. Why? Because this extended time until they momentarily stop. Do long jumpers land on asphalt or concrete? No, they land on sand. What's the deal with the sand? It extends their time, achieving change in momentum, until they safely stop. On the other hand, if you want to increase your momentum, say in archery, you're stretching the bow to launch the arrow. And the more you stretch it out, the farther the distance the arrow can get, and the bigger the force released. So, going back to Luke Aiken's world record 25,000 feet jump without a parachute, his name is John Cruikshank. Cruikshank? Cruikshank. Whatever, I'm not really sure if I pronounced it properly. Anyway, he is the civil engineer who designed the systems that made the amazing skyfall possible. Luke Aiken's two and a half minute free fall at a speed of around 190 km an hour ended with a soft landing, thanks to the 30 by 30 meter net structure designed by the civil engineer, aka the flytrap. The net was suspended approximately 20 story high by four 61 meter cranes and was made from a fiber called this, which is typically used in the fishing industry to catch tuna. All right, thumbs up. It got real at this point. All right, boys, here we go. Ready, set, see ya. Once I was out in free fall, I decided to throw a couple transitions. I hadn't planned to do that, but once I was out there, it seemed like the right thing to do. I'd never done them in free fall without a parachute on. I'd done 25,000 foot jumps before, but this one seemed like a long free fall at the beginning. 
I kept working my way in closer and closer to the target. About halfway down, I take my oxygen system off my mask, I hand that thing over to Andy, and then I don't have to worry about that thing anymore. I'm back to only focusing on the target. A little more than needed, I was a little short. I wanted to walk my way into the target. About 2,000 feet, I was perfect on the lights, dead center. At that point, I slid forward a little bit. I started to back up. I backed up too far. I started moving around. And now I have a zero ground speed. I know I'm in the net. I'm not exactly centered. I'm off to the side a little bit, but I know I'm in the safe zone. So now I just got to concentrate on a nice, clean rollover and wait for the impact. There goes the shoots. That demonstrates the conservation of momentum. That was really an extreme engineering that seemed like cannot be done, but simplified it and proved it is possible. That explains how Luke Aikens was able to survive that 25,000 feet skyfall with no parachute. And that answers the question, how did he survive a 25,000 feet freefall with no parachute? But of course, provided that you have some kind of engineering system in place to catch you safely. Why do people need to study this stuff or this momentum stuff? Maybe because momentum is a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and direction. Since momentum is a direction, it can be used to predict the resulting direction and speed of motion of objects after they collide. Thus can be used in certain applications in real life like airbags built for cars to somehow prevent or reduce the impact of the driver against the steering wheel or dashboard during car collisions or accidents. And by the way, did you know that momentum is somehow discussed in the Bible? What a great time again to learn with you guys. See you again next time. As always, stay safe, stay curious.